Hi everyone, and welcome to this painting tutorial. As I've explained previously in other videos, I'm going to look to do some more painting tutorials just to kind of show step by step my approach to painting different types of models. So I've done some for Urukai, um, in particular Urukai Scouts and Berserkers, and then I've done some other videos where I just show you a completed model and generally talk through what I did. What I want to do this time is do sort of a combination between videos and pictures just so that I can talk you through the steps I'm taking and then show you the finished result and then move on to the next step. So I'm going to do some Hobbit era models. Um, they're all going to be good models. This video in particular is going to focus on the Men of Dale. Now these very nice plastic uh, models made Games Workshop have done. Um, one complaint I would have is potentially the profile of the faces is a little shallow, making it, particularly for me because I'm not the world's greatest painter, makes it quite hard to get the faces looking realistic without them looking a bit clumsy. I'll show you what I mean in a second. So here's some warriors of Dale I've painted pre previously. You can see the faces a bit. That one in particular is very clumsy. This one's not quite as bad, but still they're not great. But as you can see, they're pretty plain paint schemes. Leather tunics. Red cloaks lined with a sort of um, cream. Um, simple armour. Scabbards. So all very, very simple, straightforward stuff to do. So... What I'll be doing is I'll be following through the process, showing you how to get them to look a bit like this. That's the idea anyway. So, first up, I've got a batch here. I'll probably focus on just one so that you can see. But, so far, what they've done, they've been spray-coated with a Ministratum Grey, which is the Grains Workshop Primer. I prefer grey because it's the halfway house between black and white. Um, white, I sometimes find that when I'm painting a model that's got a white base coat, it can show through very brightly underneath. Some colours don't cover as well and you end up with quite a bright colour shown through. The same goes for black, it can look too dark sometimes, so grey is kind of like the perfect medium. What I've then done is I've just given the metal areas a coat of Vallejo gunmetal. Do focus... Game colour gunmetal. I should note, I only use Vallejo Army Painter colours, mainly Army Painter shades, um, a little bit of obviously non oil as a shade, but beyond that, it's just Vallejo and Army Painter. I've then gone and given the face a base coat of. I think it's Cavalry Brown I used on this one. It's been a while because I started these and recently I've decided to try and do this. So you'll have to forgive me. I think it's Cavalry Brown. Yeah. Cavalry Brown. Uh, space coat for the face. And that's it so far. So we'll start from this point. Very basic steps taken so far. The shields, again, I've done as well previously. So I painted them with a gunmetal washed them with nylon oil, dry brushed them with gunmetal again, um, picked out some of the edges a bit with silver, and then gave it a slight wash of green tone, just to kind of try and make it look a little bit more interesting. And what I've done with um, these models in particular is I've mixed around some of the shields, so I've got some shields from the Erebor Dwarves that I'll give to these guys, and vice versa, the Erebor Dwarves have got some Dale shields. So... That's the first step. The next steps will be blocking in the base colours. So for that I'll be going for a heavy sienna. You cannot read it because it's so rubbed off. I've got a new one in here I think I might have. Doesn't matter. Heavy sienna will be the leather parts. I'll also use Game colour random red. I don't know what it is. I think it's scarlet red. I can't again can't really read that. I need a new one of these. To block in the capes. Once that's done, I will use Iraqi sand to edge the capes. 
and then just pick out a little bit because I'll sorry I should also say I'll be using the heavy sienna on any bows and other sort of wood as well. The um, Iraqi sand will be used to edge the cape, and then also it will be used on the kind of the undergarment here, so like the um, shirt. The brown will also be used on the shin guards and boots. Basically anything that's leather. Whoops, he's dead. Anything that's leather will get a coating of it. Okay. I'll then go back and pick out the details in the other bits next, but that's it for now. So what I'll do is I'll show you a couple of um, photographs as I'm doing it, and then also come back with another video segment once those bases colors are done. So as you can see, I've just blocked in some of the main colors. I've blocked in the browns on the tunics, the reds on the cloaks, and the beiges around the trim of the cloak. It's only a very rough um, colour at the moment. Some of them I've missed some bits, so I'll go back over. But it's just rough because after this step, we're going to give it a wash. And then once we've washed it, we'll start picking out some of the highlights. So the next step is to go back through them and everything which is sort of like a fur. So the um, fur and the hats, uh, the fur that they get at the top of the boots so and the fur on the tops of the gloves they'll all get a black grey coat it's a very just a very dark sort of charcoal grey and then anything which is going to be a metallic gold so that'll be um, the detailing on the helmet the clasps on their um, cloaks the handles of the swords, the tassels and bits on their belt, that will get a small coat of um, polished gold. After that, it will all get a wash of strong tone and we can start picking out the details. So I'll come back after I've added these extra layers. As you can see, just given them a rough coat, the gold just been added on and as has the grey around the tips of the fur. So what I'll be doing now is just going over a couple of other bits. So I'll be adding some bronze onto the um, the quiver of the archer. And I think that's probably about it. Then I'll be giving them all a wash of army painter strong tone. And that's how I did these previous ones. So the colours go on and then you add on the highlights after the wash. It's the quickest and simplest way I find of painting a batch of models. If I was painting individual ones, I might not use a wash. I might try to use layers of different colours. But for this, there's no point. It'll take me forever otherwise. So what I'll do now is I'll put on the, the additional colour and then add the wash. Then when that is dried, I'll show you how they look. So as you can see here, the wash has now been applied. It is pulled into the recesses and dried, giving us a darker colour than we had previously. There are a couple of points where it's pulled a bit. You can see it on the bottom of the cape there where I've just put too much on. But that can be quite easily fixed with the next coat. So a wash is very useful when you're doing sort of more than one um, figure at a time, really. And it's got its uses when you're doing one at a time. But when you're doing a big batch of troops, Gonna focus on here. You can do the wash over the base coat and then highlight, which is what I'll be doing from here, and then you'll be left with the darker base colour in the recesses. You go back over it with the original coat, which I'll be doing, which will be the scarlet red, and then you can start to lighten it with I've got the Vallejo just red here. And then there's the blood red, which is mixed in for an extreme highlight. So I'll make a start on the cloaks, and I'll come back to show you how that's getting on. So for this step, I'm just using simply another coat of the base colour. Put a bit out, I'll water it down, and I'll start picking out the raised parts of the cloak, just to show, well, just to kind of give us, in effect, there'll be two colours on the model, there'll be the base coat 
with the wash applied and then there'll just be the base coat again. So as you may be able to see, it depends on the quality of the camera. The raised areas have just been given a, a color base, another coat of the base coat, just to kind of bring it back together and give us a lovely two color effect. So what I'll be doing next is I'll be adding a little bit of the regular red and then some blood red just to extenuate the differences between the deep folds in the cloth and the top. Okay. So with those coats of red down, I've decided that you can see that they're starting to lighten up on the back. Really easy to see it on this one. So with those coats of red down, I'm actually running out of the scarlet red. So I'm going to actually switch over to using regular Vallejo red. And then once I've given that a go, I may add a little bit of blood red, bloody red, just to lighten it up a little bit. So I'll give the red a go and then show you how that looks. So as you can see, the Vallejo red's quite a bit lighter. So what I'll probably do is maybe give this each model a coat of this and then go back with some blood red added in just to bring back the red um, red red tinge to it. But the pit, I'll put some pictures in as well because actually doesn't it doesn't look like it's showing very well on camera. But I'll come back after the next step has been completed. So with that part completed, and as you can see different colours are starting to build up. I'm going to take some of the Vallejo red and add to it some of the game colour bloody red. This will just give it a sort of slightly lighter tone to it. So it's probably about 50-50 at the moment. As you can see, it's a bit lighter. So I'll put down a layer of that, um, take some pictures and then show you once it's done. So now that red's been added, you can see it's got a far more, it's a much brighter color to it. I'll add some photos just so you can see, but that basically completes the cape and the cloak. The next step will be moving on to probably the um, the tunic here, the brown at the front, just simply so that we can get that down before we go on to anything a bit more complex and detailed. So the next step, once the cloaks are done, is to go back in on the leather that forms part of their regular clothing. So the boots, the um, tunic areas. I'll also be going over the gloves and the spear shafts as well. And to do that, I'll be starting with, this is a uh, game color um, heavy sienna. It's rubbed off a bit so you can't really read it. I'll be going back with the base coat of that. Then I'll be lightening it up slightly with game color earth, which is just a sort of um, dark beige color. And then finally, I'll be lighting it up with Iraqi sand for the final highlight, just so I've got the three tone difference in the same way as we did on the cape. So I'll come back in after I've done the first layer, which will just be solely base coat again, and then I'll show you how the sort of proportions I mix in to start to highlight it. So we finished with the original base coat of Heavy Sienna, and you can't really tell, but all it does really is just pull back the original base colour so that you're getting a little bit of darkness between the two recesses there so where you've got any folds in the cloth I've left a bit there this is the next step so I'll just be adding a little bit of earth this will mean that we start to actually put a highlight in so as you can see 
I'll add a little bit of earth at the time just to give a lighter colour. And I use this quite commonly when I'm doing anything sort of like a dark brown. Getting a bit of feedback there on the light. But all we'll do is we'll go over the areas, just highlighting slightly further away from the edge than we did previously, just so that it gives that kind of the recess and then the base colour and then this colour. It gives sort of like three different shades, which gives us a much better 3D effect. So here we can see the layers starting to build up a bit. one touch up the edges with a lighter brown anywhere where it's slightly raised so that's two colors so far I'm not sure if I'm gonna go any further with some Iraqi sand because it might make it look a little bit too pale so what I'll be doing next is I'll be edging the probably the fur on the helmets and the boots just to give it a little bit of a highlight before then edging the capes and then going into the faces. So I'll do some of those. Let's see if this one can we see any better. Yeah, I'll do some of those and then come back shortly. So to edge the fur on the helmets and the boots, I started originally with a black grey from Vallejo. That's very dark. And as you look at it at the moment, it almost looks black, but it's actually a very dark charcoal. So it gives us a good base to highlight up using London grey, which is a slightly lighter, lighter grey. And then finally, I'll be finishing off with game colour stonewall grey so you can see the transition between the three I'll just be using thin brush strokes um, horizontal no not horizontal vertical thin brush strokes just to make get pick out the um, sort of like the edging of the fur I won't be paying too much attention to the actual um, mould itself I'll just be adding the stripes, almost a bit I suppose, like um, zebra stripes, but three layers rather than two. So I'll do that with, um, I think I'll probably try to do like a, I'll do the whole thing on one and then half on the other, another model so you can kind of see the stages. So what I should have done really was do a three step comparison showing the original base with the wash highlight and then the extreme highlights, but I didn't think that far ahead so this is just the base coat with the wash and then a highlight of London grey in comparison to the extreme highlight with stonewall grey so you can see the right hand figure here is quite a bit lighter and it just breaks up the fur a little bit, gives it a little bit more texture to it. So I'll finish off on this one. Then the next step I'll be taking will be to edge the cloaks. So for that I'll go back again, you guessed it, with the original base colour. And to highlight that, I don't want to go too far, so I'll probably either use this from Army Painter, Brain Matter Beige, or uh, game colour bone white because I don't want to go too far because I haven't gone to a white in the previous ones it's ended more as sort of like an ivory colour so once I've put down the first highlight on that I'll come back then after that all we've got left to do really will be the um, faces about the same time as I do the cape I'll do the shirts and then finally um, the gold and the steel so 
that'll be it probably for tonight and I'll come back soon. So the first step of highlighting the cloaks is done. It's just a case of giving them a coat again with the Iraqi sand. Now this can be a bit fiddly because of the intricate lines on the capes, especially on some where there's quite a lot of folds. So when I was doing this, this time round, I actually used a brand new brush so that there was been no issues with the point. Um, I also, for the archer, did the flights for the arrows and then did their shirts as well and then just tipped the bow ends there slightly. So that said. Let's see this one here. It's kind of rubbed off, so just touch that up. Yeah. So that's that for that. Then I'll lighten them slightly. Um I may even for some of them use a bit of white in there just for the extreme highlights to make it stand out but so far these are going nicely after this bit it will just be the faces hair and the metallic colors to go and then we'll pretty much be calling them finished I'll then be taking them off these bases so that'll be fun and putting them onto some generation shift bases that I've got that I've used for the rest of the army so Thanks for watching so far, and I'll come back when I've added in the next step, which will be highlighting with bone white. So now you can see the edges have been highlighted up again. That's just using the Vallejo Game Color Bone White, and it's just bringing out a slight difference between the colors, just so that from a distance you can see there's a bit of definition on them. So now that that's done, we're actually almost finished. So the next step will be to um, finish off the faces and then to highlight the gold and the silver. So what I'll do first is I will add the eyes and the pupils for these. The downside to these models is that the faces are relatively small and don't have a great sort of like depth of definition unlike some so say for example this you can see the the definition in the face is quite a bit more profound whereas these it's all quite fine definition so what I'll do is I'll use my normal technique for doing eyes which is I will paint a black bar across the um, eye socket I'll then paint a sort of so say that's the black bar paint a thinner white bar across and then paint a horizontal for the pupil so actually this is quite a good idea, good example and then when I'm painting the face I then sort of like shape the eye sockets um, using the flesh colour so that you end up getting the right kind of um, shape for the eye as opposed to still having a bar across it so I'll what I'll do is I'll probably do like the eye now and then come back before I start adding the flesh so you can see how I've done it so painting faces in particular eyes is still something I'm getting used to right at the moment they look quite clumsy until I add on the flesh tone. Yeah. I mean this one I had to I might have to redo. I'm certainly gonna have to redo his left eye. Just simply because it doesn't quite look right. But as I explained it's very it's quite a simple way of doing it. I know there are other techniques out there but I've not none that I've tried. So I'll tidy up around the edges to give it sort of like the cheekbone and eye socket in flesh rather than the white that you can currently see. So the eyes will be smaller. Yeah. 
So what I'll do now is I'll be working on the flesh. So I started off with a base coat of, I believe it was um, Cavalry Brown, which is like a ready brown. If it wasn't that one, then it would have been um, Mahogany Brown. I think it might have been Mahogany actually. So I'll start with a base coat of that. I then use the game colour Cadillan skin. Can't read it, I've had it such a long time now. Cadillan skin or whatever it's called. Um I then use a try to use a glaze normally of the next colour, which I normally go up to light flesh after having mixed a little bit into of these two. I do actually have this basic skin tone as well. So you can see it's kind of like a trio, but you always want to go dark, light, dark, medium, light. So I'll put the first layer on and I might do it separately for each model so I can show you the stages. So I'll come back in a bit. So I've built up the layers of the flesh a bit more. I mean, sculpts on these faces, I've never particularly liked painting these. They're just so flat. I mean, that that's just a mess. I'm gonna give them a flesh wash and then probably try to pick out some details but I might just end up picking out the cheeks and cheeks, chins and the tips of their noses but not particularly happy with that but it'll be good enough for the tabletop so after I've done those parts of the um, faces I there's a couple of bits and pieces to finish off I need to give this guy's bow and arrow a little recoat where I've touched it with other colours. Um, the metal, I've got a game colour silver. Um, the gold will get a touch again of game colour polished gold. Um, might mix it together, probably 50-50 silver and gold just to highlight the gold a little bit. Sometimes it can make it pop a bit more. But we're coming up to finishing them now. Uh, they're not looking too bad. A few little bits here and there to touch up, but the majority of what you see of these models when they're on the tabletop is the cloaks. So that's the bit I like to focus on, making sure they look good, because as you're looking down on the table, you see the cloaks. There. Okay. So I've had a couple of attempts at doing the faces because I had a bit of a mare with these. The sculpt of the face on these particular models isn't great because it's very shallow. I might mention that in the previous section, but it does mean that it's a little bit more difficult to, or I certainly find it more difficult to highlight. So, I went over them again, washed them, added the eyes, which do look a little goofy, especially him here. But just picked out the highest points of the face, so the cheeks, the nose, and the bottom lip. This one, he's got his mouth open, but you can't really. Probably should have painted it a bit darker inside. But that's that part done. Um, I'm going to call that finished because they're just they're too annoying to keep going over and over again. If the definition was a bit better, I might, but I can't be bothered. So, the next point will be to highlight the metal, in particular the gold and the silver. So, to do that, to highlight the gold, I'll be going over it with a coat of the base coat again, the Vallejo Game Colour Polished Gold, and then for an extreme highlight on it, I'll be adding in some silver, um, which is just the... Vallejo game colour silver, so this. That's what I'll also be using to highlight the um, 
steel areas as well, so like the spears and the swords. The final point will be this one guy. I've used bronze on the um, the quiver, so I'll highlight that a little bit. And then I'll probably, on the arrows, just touch them up, make sure the tips are brown, touch up the edges of the feathers with a bit of white just to make it pop out a bit more. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned previously, but I've got a couple of shields here. So I've got two shields from the Warriors of Dale set. And then I've got a shield from a warrior variable. Um, I've been swapping these around as I go, so that's three shields. Um, so everyone will have a shield, except for the arrow guy. And once they're on, that's it completed. I'll then be moving on to basing, so I'll show you basically what I do with that. But I've been using some resin bases, so it's a bit of a cheat. But they look much better than trying to work on these Games Workshop ones. So what I'll do is I'll move on now to highlight the metal. Once I've done that, I'll actually I'll finish them off, I'll highlight everything else that needs to be done. And then I'll base them and then show you what they look like once they've been put onto the generation shift bases that I've got. So here's the final lineup. This is the last five of the Warriors of Dale that I had to finish. Um, originally bought these for battle companies and quite like them. So, contemplating perhaps doing some more. Um, after I finished the painting on these, um, which would have been at the last stage I showed you, I noticed a bit of a cock up. I'd actually um, done the cloaks a slightly different colour from my previous ones I've painted. So, I had to go over it again. So, I gave it another thin coat of um, Vallejo Bloody Red, which is one of the game colour paints. So, it's quite bright. <clears throat> and you can see it's definitely a... A very different shade but it just sort of makes it a little bit more pops out a bit more and it matches the ones I've painted previously so gave them a coat um, they do need they are a bit shiny so they need a coat of matte varnish so what I normally do is I give it a coat of a GS suit which is like a satin varnish but it's very strong and then I give it a blast of um, anti-shine both of these are army painter sprays give it a coat of anti-shine just to dull them back down to a matte finish. So, originally bought these for battle companies, might might get some more. I'd need a hero to lead them, like a captain or um, uh, Girion. One of them here, so this guy's got a shield from the Dwarven Infantry set, just because the um, Erebor and Dale battle company are part of the same list, so you start off with some Erebor and some Dale. So I thought I'd mix up the shields a little bit, just for a little bit of variety. The bases are from Generation Shift. Um, if you've not heard of them before, I think you can search on um, Facebook and they've got a store on there. Um, they do a wide variety of bases of different sizes. Um, I think going from 25mm, 40mm, 80mm for trolls and monsters. And then even bigger for some some things. I believe there's a, scenic, there's a scenic base for Radagast on his sleigh. They're brilliant. They're great. They're resin bases. They're relatively cheap. Um, and they paint up really nicely. This is the Broken White City range. Which is sort of like a mixture. Actually, I've got a spell on here somewhere. It's a halfway mix. Hang on. Here we go. Some um, bricks, rubble or mud, however you want it to be. And I believe it's meant to be um, sort of like an Osgiliath slash Minas Tirith style base. So a lot of people I know paint these slabs in a pale colour. I just thought these look quite good as generic ruins as well, so I use them on these guys. So yeah, and that's it. So I'll have a go at putting this whole video together making it a bit of a painting guide. Um, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to drop me a message. Um, I try to respond to as many comments as I can when I see them. Um, that's the end of this project. Next up, I'll be working on some um, the newer range. I've got the new Gandalf the White that I'm currently working on. I've also got myself an airbrush now, so I'm going to try and have a go at using that. So, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon. Bye.